over the last couple of years, National Gallery Victoria has been looking at broadening our environmental parameters in our gallery spaces for sustainability and better practice. The project has been greatly enhanced by the opportunity to collaborate with the Getty Conservation Institute, who have been implementing acoustic emission technology to monitor any potential micro change on one of our wooden heritage objects. In the following presentation, the authors will speak to some of the highlights of the project and some of the challenges too. For more information about the project, please refer to our paper and enjoy the following presentation. Our collaboration with the GCI goes back a couple of years now, and I think probably one of the stepping points for this particular project was when in 2019 we held the Managing Collection Environments workshop here at the NGV, which was a, a, a really fabulous workshop that the, the GCI have hosted before, and we were the second workshop here in, in Melbourne. It brought together lots of international colleagues particularly from the Southern Hemisphere, and it's a chance to really think about all these issues around museum environments and thinking about not just what we do now, but what we should be doing in the future and how you might move forward working collaboratively with colleagues and international standards. In 2017, the Victorian State Government implemented the Climate Change Act, which seeks to reach net zero emissions by 2050. In 2019, the NGV entered into an energy performance contract with the Victorian State Government. And what that contract allowed is the front ending of facility upgrades to equipment and plant to ensure that they ran more efficiently. Part of the EPC, Energy Performance Contract, was looking at things like lighting upgrades, optimisation of, of valves, but particularly for us, it was also looking at whether or not widening the parameters for our collection environments would help to bring greater energy efficiency. There are a number of environmental guidelines. The NGV has chosen the BEZO Green Protocol because of our role as an international lender to a number of other members within the BEZO group. The traditional sort of standard of having 50 plus or minus 5% RH and 21 plus or minus 1 degree settings places quite a big strain on our heating and air conditioning systems. And this project has been a really important pathway to see what those widening of parameters might be in terms of energy efficiency gains. In 2014, when BEZO proposed these protocols, we started a process of thinking about what that would mean for our institution and for our collections internally. We approved in principle the protocol, but we didn't necessarily jump in there and switch to BEZO parameters, but we've done a lot of research thinking about how that might influence our collection. And so I guess we're trying to do it in a safe and programmed way. And by working with the Getty Conservation Institute, we've managed to have a chance to do a level of testing that wasn't otherwise available to us. Currently, we are running a dual system in the museum. Some of our own collection galleries are running at BEZO and all of our exhibition loan galleries are not running at BEZO. And so we've got this interesting middle phase where we're monitoring two types of things. So the way we've been running this particular study is we've actually chosen a specific gallery that has a dedicated air handling unit. We've made some adaptions to that, to the software and controls of it, so we can switch on and off BEZO protocols from our more traditional tightly held protocols. We also have extra energy monitoring equipment in there as well. And so far what we've been doing is we've been monitoring background noise in, in using acoustic emissions on a particular artwork. And in the future, very near future, we, we will switch across to the BEZO protocols. And so we're going to broaden our parameters slightly. It's going to be a change in the museum environment. And we're, we're going to really closely and um, incredibly minutely monitor the change, potential change in that object. The NGV holds a really large and diverse collection of over 80,000 objects and they range from ancient collections through to contemporary and from all parts of the world. So we have a lot of objects to choose from. AE monitoring really focuses on wood objects and as a material that's a really important one being hygroscopic as well as really common and it's found in pretty much every part of our collection. So we did consider several items for this study but in the end, we chose the Flemish carved retabla of the Passion of the Christ. It was constructed in the second decade of the 16th century in Antwerp, and this would have been placed at the high altar of a Catholic church for the edification of and veneration by the faithful. Firstly, it has a really diverse range of wood treatment to test from. So it has a very large wooden case made of large oak planks and that holds 103 polychromed and gilded sculptures that are also made of oak. 
and then it has uh, wooden panel paintings that form hinged wings on the side. So overall it spans over four metres in width and two metres in height. It's a good object that can house all of this equipment in a non-visually intrusive way. Other reasons it was important is that we really understand its condition and treatment history really well. It's been in that gallery in the NGV since 2003, so long term. And also it's a really striking and engaging object. It's very popular with the public. So it's a good chance for us to engage our audience and highlight the research that we're doing in this area. The acoustic emission is a method used very broadly in the industry. We are using the mesh of uh, very sensitive sensors, uh, acoustic sensors, microphones, which are attached to the surface of the objects. And when, whenever there is a cracking or micro cracking of the structure of the material, in the, somewhere in the bulk of the material, the Microcracking is releasing the energy in form of acoustic wave and this acoustic wave is traveling to in all direction but also toward the surface of the objects and then that is captured by the microphones and a transfer to electric signal. The, the biggest advantage of the system is that we can monitor in real time and uh, therefore we can correlate measured signal informing us about the damage of the objects or microcracking of the objects with the climatic conditions. So we know uh, what kind of changes in temperature and humi humidity are resulting in microcracking of the material. And the most important thing is that the method is extremely, extremely sensitive, so we can observe this, those changes, though, those microcrackings, long before they become visible. So this method is really the way of safeguarding objects when we, uh, when we use some particular uh, change of conditions. The major role that I held in this collaboration with the National Gallery of Victoria was to examine the environmental data that was associated both with the acoustic emission and the environments in the NGV galleries. The environmental data that we collect inside the gallery spaces of the NGV gives us insight into how the building responds to the exterior environment. The exterior environment provides the forcing factors that the building envelope has to mitigate in order to maintain a specific interior temperature and RH condition. But by choosing to change the temperature and RH conditions inside the gallery, it could potentially um, allow us to be more sustainable in terms of not having to fight as much against what's happening outside the building. When we're examining the interior environment, the environmental data gives us insight into the performance of the climate control system. Some things that we can look at are the 24-hour fluctuations in temperature and relative humidity. How is it changing in the short term and the subsequent response to the object? We can extend that time window to look at seasonal fluctuations. How is it changing over the winter versus the summer? This project was always going to be a complicated thing to orchestrate, especially working with, with the Getty Conservation Institute who are based in LA. Added to this, we started the project at the same time as COVID hit Melbourne and restrictions of travel and restrictions of movement really made us have to rethink how we're going to do it. And so over the last year and a half or so, we've been working remotely with the Getty Conservation Institute. They very generously sent out their acoustic emissions equipment and technology to Melbourne. They trained us and helped us in set up the installation process. And on a daily basis, we're collaborating remotely with them, logging in remotely from, from their side and us adjusting here. And so, it, you know, look, it's, it would have been a, a challenge at the beginning, but because we all went through that process of COVID and working from home and working remotely, it's sort of come together really well and it's actually been very successful. It was difficult for me to imagine that it can be done totally remotely, but surprisingly it appears uh, to be very, very effective, but I think only because uh, we have a, a very highly motivated, motivated partners at NGV and, and also we spent a lot of time working together on exchanging information, providing the, the very detailed uh, detail instructions. Uh, but I would like to insist that this, this advantage of uh, working remotely is, is uh, on both sides. So on uh, one side, I believe that we transferred very effectively knowledge about how the system is working and what it's capable of to the team at NGV. But on the other side, we learn a lot about the difficulties in installing the system on the particular 
uh, uh, object, in this case the, 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 this, this altarpiece we were working with, and understanding uh, how this uh, should be done effectively to uh, suit the operation of the, uh, of the gallery and the museum. With projects like this, it really is an incredibly collaborative process. So within the institution itself, obviously conservation, registration, engineering, exhibition management, everybody is really heavily invested in the museum environment. And so it's about a process of working together. And sometimes these teams haven't worked so closely in a project like this before. And so it's been a great chance to come together and think about how we communicate with each other and have the same, the same ideals and the same endpoints. I think this research is important because in the conservation field, sometimes we have a misperception of the magnitude of risk and that variations in temperature and humidity can bring to the objects. Uh, especially if we think about the amount of effort and uh, resources that are invested in, in trying to mitigate those risks. So this research, I think it's out there and met monitoring an object inside the gallery seeing how the, not only from the, the technical point of view but how you can get an engineer, a conservator and a registrar to sit down in a table and discuss so what is that this collection needs and not just pick numbers out of a, a book and apply because it's the easiest solution. It's interesting that it happens at, at NGV that it's a place that had this ideal climate that we've been dealing with for, for decades and they willingly decided to move forward, move, move towards a more uh, broader parameters. So I think this sends out a message to other museums that either don't have this uh, conditions and are trying to find funds to implement those systems, that money that could be spent elsewhere to mitigate other risks or even to uh, push forward other parts of the program of the museum not necessarily attached to conservation uh, and institutions that do have those parameters but are afraid of making that that move now they're seeing that it's it's safe it, it, you need a lot of conversation there's a lot of work involved you need to talk to the technicians but it can be done in a, in a safe way I think what's interesting about this project for other conservers is really it's a, it's a chance to bring a level of scientific rigour to some of these questions and perhaps concerns we have about adjusting our environmental parameters in, in the museum. We're very lucky at the NGV, it has actually a fantastic thermal mass, it functions very, very well, but even so we're really keen to think about moving forward whether we can actually reduce our carbon footprint. It's actually trying to be on the, on the front foot for collection care, so if we do have to change our parameters, perhaps because of legal obligations or government constraints, then we're prepared and we understand what that means. I think what is really interesting about this project is that we're happy to share our step-by-step -step processes with other colleagues and I think with moving into new wider parameters or different parameters from a standard, there's always going to be concerns from different parties about the risks involved, the choice of, of environmental guidelines that people are choosing, and it's such a complex decision-making process. This project has been really important to sort of share all that decision-making from the different stakeholders involved in this process throughout. Obviously, the risk to collections aspect is something very <laughs> dear to conservators, and, and that's why we realised we needed to partner with groups like the GCI because of their expertise in this area. But obviously there are so many other groups involved to ensure that this can become an industry-wide change so that we do move towards more sustainable collection care practices. I think the impact that this project might have is really, it's, it's one of the con contributing factors and hopefully the, the research we're doing and the path we've gone on and the documentation we're, we're sort of leaving behind will help others contribute. We're doing our path in our museum, in our climate, in all these scenarios. And it's been complicated, and I think that's what we're trying to record and understand better. And hopefully that will be a way of moving forward for other people who follow.